We continue today with chapter 20, Heralds of Eternity. In this world, God's Son comes closest to himself in a holy relationship. There he begins to find the certainty his Father has in him. And there he finds his function of restoring his Father's laws to what was held outside them and finding what was lost. Only in time can anything be lost and never lost forever. So do the parts of God's Son gradually join in time, with each thought joining, is the end of time brought nearer. Each miracle of joining is a mighty herald of eternity. No one who has a single purpose, unified and sure, can be afraid. No one who shares his purpose with him cannot be one with him. Each herald of eternity sings of the end of sin and fear. Each speaks in time of what is far beyond it. Two voices are raised together, call to the hearts of everyone, to let them beat as one. And in that single heartbeat is the unity of love proclaimed and given welcome. Peace be to your holy relationship which has the power to hold the unity of the Son of God together. You give to one another for everyone, and in your gift is everyone made glad. Forget not who has given you the gifts you give, and through your not forgetting this, will you remember who gave the gifts to him to give to you. It is impossible to overestimate your brother's value. Only the ego does this, but all it means is that it wants the other for itself, and therefore values him too little. What is inestimable clearly cannot be evaluated. Do you recognize the fear that rises from the meaningless attempt to judge what lies so far beyond your judgment you cannot see it? Judge not what is invisible to you, or you will never see it, but wait in patience for its coming. It will be given you to see your brother's worth when all you want for him is peace. And what you want for him you will receive. How can you estimate the worth of him who offers peace to you? What would you want except his offering? His worth has been established by his father and you will recognize it as you will receive his father's gift through him. What is in him will shine so brightly in your grateful vision that you will merely love him and be glad. You will not think to judge him, for who would see the face of Christ and yet insist that judgment still has meaning? For this insistence is of those who do not see. Vision or judgment is your choice, but never both of these. Your brother's body is as little use to you as it is to him. When it is used only as the Holy Spirit teaches, it has no function. For minds need not the body to communicate. The sight that sees the body has no use which serves the purpose of holy relationship. And while you look upon your brother thus, the means and end have not been brought in line. Why should it take so many holy instants to let this be accomplished, when one would do? There is but one, the little breath of eternity that runs through time like golden light is all the same, nothing before it, nothing afterwards. You look upon each holy instant as a different point in time, it never changes, all that it ever held or will ever hold is here right now. The past takes nothing from it and the future will add no more. Here then is everything. Here is the loveliness of your relationship with means and end in perfect harmony already here. Here is the perfect faith that you will one day offer to your brother already offered you and here the limitless forgiveness you will give each other already given, the face of Christ you yet will look upon, already seen.
can you evaluate the giver of a gift like this? Would you exchange this gift for any other? This gift returns the laws of God to your remembrance, and merely by remembering them, the laws that held you prisoner to pain and death must be forgotten. This is no gift your brother's body offers you. The veil that hides the gift hides him as well. He is the gift, and yet he knows it not. No more do you, and yet have faith that he who sees the gift in both of you will offer and receive it for you both. And through his vision will you see it, and through his understanding recognize it and love it as your own. Be comforted and feel the Holy Spirit watching over you in love and perfect confidence in what he sees. He knows the Son of God and shares his Father's certainty in the universe. Rest in his gentle hands in safety and in peace. Let us consider now what he must learn to share his Father's confidence in him. What is he that the Creator of the universe should offer it to him and know it rest in safety? He looks upon himself not as his Father knows him, and yet it is impossible the confidence of God should be misplaced. And from the workbook, Lesson 162, I am as God created me. This single thought held firmly in mind would save the world. From time to time we will repeat it as we reach another stage in learning. It will mean far more to you as you advance. These words are sacred, for they are the words God gave in answer to the world you made. By them it disappears, and all things seen within its misty clouds and vaporous illusions vanish as these words are spoken, for they come from God. Here is the word by which the Son became his Father's happiness, his love, and his completion. Here creation is proclaimed and honored as it is. There is no dream these words will not dispel, no thought of sin and no illusion which the dream contains that will not fade away before their might. They are the trumpet of awakening that sounds around the world. The dead awake in answer to its call, and those who live and hear this sound will never look on death. Holy indeed is he who makes these words his own, arising with them in his mind, recalling them throughout the day, at night bringing them with him as he goes to sleep. His dreams are happy, and his rest secure, his safety certain, and his body healed, because he sleeps and wakens with the truth before him always. He will save the world, because he gives the world what he receives each time he practices the words of truth. Today we practice simply, for the words we use are mighty and they need no thoughts beyond themselves to change the mind of him who uses them. So holy is it changed that it is now the treasury in which God places all his gifts and all his love to be distributed to all the world, increased in giving, kept complete because its sharing is unlimited. And thus you learn to think with God Christ's vision has restored your sight by salvaging your mind. We honor you today. Yours is the right to perfect holiness you now accept. With this acceptance is salvation brought to everyone. For who could cherish sin when holiness like this has blessed the world? Who could despair when perfect joy is yours, available to all as remedy for grief and misery? all sense of loss, and for complete escape from sin and guilt. And who would not be brother to you now, you his Redeemer and his Savior? Who could fail to welcome you into his heart with loving invitation, eager to unite with one like him in holiness? 
You are as God created you. These words dispel the night, and darkness is no more. The light is come today to bless the world, for you have recognized the Son of God, and in that recognition is the world's. Amen.